Kum len in a black Gemara. This Gemara is a Tzadik Aleph Amad Aleph. This is the Gemara for Yom Kippur. We are up to the Mishnah, and we were talking about, you know, the children of different wives, how they divide the estate. And we talked about this Exuva Kobinindiklin, where you want to, <clears throat> each one wants her children to be taken care of. This is separate to the general estate. And and uh, and the husband would uh, would negotiate with his wife, and each one would have a different arrangement with each one. And they're entitled to collect it. The children, the heirs, are entitled to collect it, provided that there's still some money left over to fulfill the mitzvah of having a yerusha. There has to be yerusha that can be divisible, uh, divided. So the, this mission delineates that a bit further. It says the mission of Sargalov and Ralov towards the bottom of the page. We show you Nosish Te Nosim, sorry, married two women, the Mason. And they both died. But Achakach Mesu, and then he died. So now the children, the heirs, are going to divide the, the, the state. The Yusayimim Mevachin Ksuvas Iman, and the orphans, they first each one wants to get their own, especially those those who are entitled to a larger Ksuva. Of course, they want to get first their distribution before they divide the rest for the state. They ain't from the Sheikh Ksuvas. But the problem is, there's only sufficient funds to cover both Ksuvas, nothing spare. Chelki Mishava. We cancel this uh, whole Ksuvah benediction and they divide equally the estate because Yerusha is from the Torah. So we are we are up to talking about what we learned yesterday about the division of the estate. <clears throat> if there was an excess of at least one dinner so they could fulfill the mitzvah of, of Yerusha, then Elu Neitlik Suvas Iman, the Elu Neitlik Suvas Iman. Then each heir first takes the Suva that was arranged with their mother, that was the Benedictine, that special thing to take care of the kids, and then they divide the estate. What happens if there's only sufficient amount of money to cover the two Suvas? There's no, nothing left over for the state. Then we say we cancel the state. So the children who are entitled to, whose mother organized or negotiated a much larger Suva feel cheated. So they came up with this ruse. They said, you know what? We are going to inflate um, the estate of our father, the assets of our father by one dinner. So the, so after we take what's rightfully ours, there'll be an excess of a dinner so that we can have Yerusha. Or we are going to add uh, the value of a dinner in order to them. And this will entitle them that they can, they can take their own Suva of the mother, and then there'll be a dinner left over to divide. <clears throat> um, in other words, they're going to say that the, the, you know, the money that's entitled to us, instead of being $150, we'll say it's 151 So we'll only take 150 of that and we'll leave a dinner over. And you inflate the prices. Ain't Shemlin. We don't listen to them. We assess them in a proper bezden, whatever they're worth, they're worth, and that's it. What about how you show the chasin below? What happens if there was, uh, let's say, assets that were owed to their father, but wasn't there yet? <clears throat> um, or let's say from the grandfather that hasn't yet um, that hasn't yet happened. And if it, it, but, but when it will happen, it will be there will be an excess of a dinner to the service. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, what do you call it? Nevertheless, ain't kim We don't. To say it as if it already happened, it didn't, and therefore the moment you don't have the entitlement, so therefore it's just a Yerusha. Rav Shimon says, I feel yes from the even if you do have asset, excess assets, but they're portable assets, they don't count. We need to look at land, property. We need land, property that is worth at least an, an extra dinner over and above the division of the Psalms. If one family was promised a Ksuvah Benedictine of a thousand Zeus, and the other family was promised 500 Zeus, if there is a 1501 dinner in the pile, then Elun Nightling Suvah's Iman, the Elun Nightling Suvah's Iman, each one's entitled to take the of their mother. But the Im Lab is only $1,500 there or less. They, they divide equally. The, the, tzuba, the, people, the, tzuba, the larger tzuba can't say, oh, we're Michael, we don't need the full thousand tzuba. We'll take 950. It doesn't work that way. Because the tzuba is being dedicated. If you follow it, you got to follow it to a letter or whatever's available. And there's nothing left over for the Yerushan. We don't allow that to happen. That's for sure. The day the person passed away, the father passed away, let's say there were 1,501 dollars worth of assets but then a month later when it came time to divide it there was a major crash there was a 
there was a recession, suddenly the $1,501 assets became worth $1,300. So the question is, what happens now? So the Gemara Pshit, the Rubin and Ismaitu, they were excess assets at the time of death, and then they were they, they, they reduced in value. It, it, it doesn't matter. We still divide the Ksubas because the moment the father died, that's when the Yerusha takes place, and therefore they already were entitled to their Ksubas. What about the other way around? Muatim and Islam, at the time of death, it wasn't 1500 Zuz value there. But the time it came to distribution, after probate and everything, six months later, now suddenly the 1700 is worth of assets. What happens then? Do we first give the service and then divide, or we look at the moment of death? Toshma come here. The Nick said about the way Bartartur, Muati, the estate of Bartartur was not sufficient, insufficient, and then an increase of value. But also the Kamid Ramam, Kibar Amram, Amal, who he said to them, Zil go, Faisinu, he told the Told the people of the the larger ksuba, <clears throat> he told me the larger ksuba that um, doesn't matter right now. You have enough value in the assets. What matters is the time of death, and therefore you're not entitled to anything. At time of death, there wasn't sufficient funds. If you want to, you want to negotiate something, go and negotiate with the other with the people of the smaller ksuba. Maybe they'll or, or you'll organize something. But yeah, if you should listen. To him. Amalu, he said to them, if you don't go and talk to them and listen to my instructions, I will smack you with silver, with a thorn, that doesn't cause any blood. In other words, I will put you in Kherim, and the reason is because you don't listen to, to the Rav. You have to listen to a Rav. You don't listen, you go to Kherim. Anyway, Shadina came to Nachman, so Amram sent them before Rab Nachman to see if he agrees and whatever. Nachman had a stronger, best, and more authority. Amalan, and this is what he said to them. Kishem Shema Rubin ben Ismail to Zoch ben Yosh. It's like if there's sufficient funds and then it was reduced. The Yoshim of the larger Ksuba, um, Yashim there is shared. So that even though later on, later on there were insufficient funds, it doesn't matter, there's nothing left for Yerusha. They still are entitled, each one to the Ksuba. Iskach, the same thing, Mu Atin ben Israbu, there was minimum funds, not insufficient to cover. And then it increased Zoch ben Yoshim. The Yoshin were Zoycha. Which Yoshin? Rashi takes as Moses Shane Mir hold that Zoycha ben Yoshin means that the, the people of the small Luxembourg, um, since there was not enough funds, so what happened is the people of the small Luxembourg are happy because there's not enough funds, so we forget the Luxembourg, we'll divide Yerusha equally. They're ahead. So when so um, the Gemara, when it says Zoch ben Yoshim, it's not the same thing. Even though it says Kashem Kach, which normally would mean Kashem Kach, it's exactly the same. Here it doesn't mean exactly the same. The principle is the same. Uh, that um, the, and the principle is that what that the, the Zoich as soon as the person dies. So whichever way it works, we don't care. The main thing is that it happens as soon as it dies. That's what Rashi learns. So according to this, Nachman agrees with Rabbi Amr. Others, however, learn Tessie actually brings an opinion that says no, that's exactly the same outcome. That in this case here, just like over there, the, 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 the family with the logic super one, if it was a it had sufficient funds and then it was reduced, they, they divide the Ksubas, even though there's no Yerusha. So the same thing as well, when it, it was reduced and now increased, and it's enough funds to cover both Ksubas, then the Ksuba, the people of the logic will get their logic as well. Kashem Kach means exactly the same. That the larger ksuba always wins out. So interesting, they're arguing in when we say shame and kach, does it mean exactly the same? Or it means the principle is the same? It doesn't mean exactly the same. Because generally we say that kishem and kach means it's exactly the same. Whenever you learn Rambam, you use the word kishem and kach, and all the Mephoshim talk about how it's exactly the same. And how is it? Because sometimes it's different. Here you see the more clearly there's an argument when we're showing him when it says kishem and kach, doesn't mean in every respect. Because it's not really in every respect. Because in the first case, it was the the, 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 the people of the Ksuba they can got the Ksuba, and the second case they didn't get the Ksuba. Oh, the only Kshem Kach is because the principle is the same. And we look at the moment of death. So it's not exactly the same. Not like this other shot that says, no, it's exactly the same, and they all entitled the Ksuba. Anyway, fundamental argument, but we'll put it aside. Ahu Gabra, there's a person, that we must be Alfred Zuzi, there's a person that they lent him a thousand dollars, and um, Havalei to the Abdin, the Abdin, he had two palaces, two big homes, palatial homes. So he sold to the same person twice, uh, to two different properties, two different transactions. First, sold one home for $500, then he sold the other one for $500. 
Okay, so Reuben owed Shimon a thousand dollars, and uh, Reuben sold to Levi two of his property. Now Shimon, when he comes to collect Reuben, he had no money. So what happens? He goes to Levi. So also Balchayiv, Balchayiv came. He took one of the palatial homes as um, payment, which is only covers half the payment, five hundred dollars. Then Then he went back to try to to obtain the second one as well to cover his full loan. He went to Levi because Ruben had no funds. So what did Levi do? But he wanted to keep the property. So he gave, he went to Shimon, the lender, and he gave, yeah. Levi the buyer, and he went to the lender and gave him an ultimatum. He said, Shokal Alves took of him a thousand dollars cash. And he said, because the Gabe, he went to Shimon. Omelie said the following, I'm giving you a prayer now. E Shaviluch Alpha Zuz, if you accept the first property you took, which even though it cost me 500, you accept it as a full value of a thousand dollars, and therefore your entire loan has been uh, paid off. Lachai, good on you. Be loy. And if you refuse, then I'm taking that property back and I'm forcing you to take a thousand dollars. Shokil Alpha Zuzib is telling I'm giving you the full cash. You're not entitled to take my property. You're entitled to get a thousand dollars. If it's a thousand dollars, then you take your property. So not only can the borrower force the lender to take cash instead of property, the purchaser also can force it to take cash instead of the property. I'm giving you a thousand dollars, pay off your whole loan, and give me back my original property. So that's what happens. So Rabbi Muhammad thought, hi, no must this. So <clears throat> the old part of the ultimatum is that if, if, um, if you want to keep the property, you must accept the value of a thousand dollars, inflating the value. So number of Chama said, well, now Mishnah, we learned you can't inflate values in the case of the two heirs, when there's no insufficient funds, there's no excess funds. And one of them said, okay, I'll increase the value of the assets, so I'll take a little bit less. Um, and it says in Mishnah, you can't do that. So Rabbi Chama thought the same thing over here. So Rabbi Chama said, hey, no, this is exactly the case in Mishnah. Imam, you say, the often say, I don't know, if they want to increase the value by doing the Mishnah says you can't. So here too, you cannot force the, the, the lender to accept the first property as a thousand dollars. It's only five hundred dollars. So therefore, you can't force me to take a thousand dollars to pay off because you already, I already took your property. What you do is force me to take five hundred dollars. Okay, Omalei. And 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 it seems from here because we're having more of a other places whether Hadashuma, which means whether we say. That afterwards, let's say, even though the lender took the, let's say the lender took the property away from the bar, where the bar then comes up with funds, he can go to the lender and say, "Here, take the money that I owed you from two years ago and give me back my property." And whether it applies also to the purchaser, somebody purchased a property, he lost it to the lender, but then he got some funds. He went to the lender, said, "Here, take the money, give back the property." And here it seems to me that they can't do that. Omelet Rav says, "Rav, me dummy, how can you compare this case to mission?" Also, the reason why a mission does not allow you to inflate the uh, East Loop say Liasma, because the, the, the orphans of the, of the mother who has this, the smaller, the lesser Ksuva, the Ksuva Mendikun, they lose out. Because if you're gonna do, if you're gonna inflate the price, then the people of the larger Ksuva will get a larger amount than the people of the smaller Ksuva. So you're causing a loss. That's why the mission says you cannot go ahead and inflate property where it benefits one, doesn't benefit the other. Here there's no loss. Alpha Yoiv, the Alpha Shokum. He gives him a braider. Either you accept the property as a thousand dollars, and 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 if you accept it, then there's no loss, or take the thousand dollars cash. And, and so therefore, it's not considered a loss in this case. And that's why over here, the robber said you could inflate it. He argued on He says he definitely could inflate the property, and um, and, um, and and give this ultimatum to the lender. Says the gemara, the tear for become. Um, it was, uh, oh, interesting. So let's say, okay, let's say he accepts the property value, the first property of thousand dollars. So now the buyer goes to the lender, to, to, to the to the vendor, which is Ruvain. He said, "Look, you sold me a property, two property. You sold me a property, and I lost it. He paid for five hundred dollars, but he used it to pay off the lender a thousand dollar loan." So the, when he goes back to Ruben to eat to get to the value, or is it compensated? Does he get a compensation for five hundred dollars, which is what he paid, or he gets a compensation for a thousand dollars, which is what the property was valued at when he lost it? And why are we even asking the question? Because the din is, let's say, if I bought a property um, and and then I lose it, and the property increased in value because of the effort I put in, then you have to recompensate. You know, you have to compensate me for everything. 
if, if for everything, including the sheva, including the benefit. So what happens over here where I inflate the value of thousand dollars and I paid off the entire loan? So you pay me a thousand five hundred. We come up with Finan. How much do we write that he should get reimbursed? Abino Mabal for the full thousand dollars. And Abino Mabuchamish may what he paid. He paid five hundred. And this is an artificial inflation. It's not like Sheva you put into the land, you improve the value of the land. This is an artificial inflation, and therefore it doesn't count. Now the Gemara will bring exactly the same story, but of lesser amounts. Again, like last time we had yesterday, a number of stories saying the same thing. Here's another example of that, which I'm not sure why. We got there was a person with a mask of maze that he that he was lent hundred dollars. How they take it in that he has two small parcels of land. Sold to the same person fifty dollars each. This model only works if you sold to the same person. So therefore, I have leverage. I can give you an ultimatum: either increase the value of the land that you already took. Or take the full money back. If, if if two different people bought it, how can the other person say you better take the value of the other person's land you bought? Have no say over the other person's uh, other than the care's land. Also, the lender. I took one of the parcels of the land. How does the leader? Then he wants to take the other one. Sees the other one. Shock of kuzu. So the the buyer lady took a hundred dollars because they went to the lender. Mommy told he shall the kuzu. If it accepted the value of the first parcel that you took from me. It is worth a hundred dollars. The high great be loy if not shkoyel kuf zuzi take a hundred dollars. We start looking goodbye, giving back my original parcel. So what Rabbi Zalman ben Haynim says, Rabbi Yisrael thought this is the case of Rishon. You're, you're artificially inflating your price to benefit you. It doesn't work. Im amaru yisaim leibai yemit dami. How can you compare? Hasam is lo pseid liasim over there benefiting one, but you're harming the other. Hacham I pseid the east over here. What loss do you have? May yo may shaku. He gave him a hundred and he gave him back a hundred. It's only the lender and he gives him basically if he wants doesn't want he can take a hundred dollars cash. Matirfa become a kasvina. So okay, when he goes back to the vendor to to get compensated, what value does he place on the, the single parcel of land that he lost? Avina said the mayor for the full value that he valued another hundred because it paid off a hundred dollar loan. And Avina said the chamshin fifty, vichel of the chamshin fifty because it's not official inflation. That doesn't count. Ahugabra, there was a person that we masked by Muzuzu. There was a person at the lent of hundred dollars. Shochi he died. Shabbat, he left behind Katina the Ara, he left behind a little parcel of land, Abishabi Hamshin Suzu. So Reuben owed Shimon $100, Reuben died, left behind a parcel of land for $50, which means that Reuben, that Shimon was entitled to collect the land. Meanwhile, uh, Reuben's children, the Yusayimim, they now own the land. Also, Balchayd, the Balchayd came, Kutarovay took away the parcel of land at the partial payment. But the Yas, the Yasemi, they wanted the land, very sentimental. They wanted the land. So what they did was they brought the cash, the $50, and gave it to them. Ozil Yasemi, Yavale Chamsi, gave him $50. So how did then, he went back and took the land again. He said he's still, still an outstanding debt of $50. Total of loan was for 100 The land was only worth 50 You You paid me, you took it back, fine. Now you still own a piece of land, another 50 I'm taking that as well. Also, the comment about it, the Yusemi says, not fair. You know, we, we bought the land back from you. you. We bought it now. And if you bought it now, you have no right to take the land. So how do we view this land? Omelahen. So Abayi said, Mitzvah al hayisaymim lifroya chayavim. There's a mitzvah al kavit kibirav to pay the debt of your father. So therefore, we don't view it as if you bought this parcel land. Hani kamoy mitzvah We view it at the $50 that you gave him was uh, as payment of your father's debt. Even though we cannot force you to pay your father's debt, we cannot force you to pay your father's debt because Kibbutz of Aim, as Taisa says before, Kibbutz of Aim is Marchum, will have one of those mitzvahs where the, whatever there's a mitzvah where the trader writes the reward right next to it, there's a, there's a matas chat, this is written right next to it, we do not force. So therefore, Kibbutz of Aim, it says, the we don't compel you to... Uh, to do Kibbutz of Aim, or Rashi says, because the Mitzvah to Rabbanon, and Mitzvah Rabbanon, we don't force you. Taisha disagrees. He says clearly that even Mitzvah to Rabbanon will force you as well, but because Kibbutz of Aim is a Mitzvah Shabbat and Shkara it's written the reward right next to it. Bottom line is that the $50 that we, we view it, not as you bought the land, but you as paying off your father's debt, is, is hash to Kitarib, so therefore now that he that he takes it back, is Bedin Kitarib, he's taking it back rightfully so. He's taking it right back. <clears throat> Um, because all the assets of the labor are mishubed to the loan, and therefore he can take it back a second time. But when do we say that the only they can say clearly that we're buying the land? They said the fifty dollars we gave you is not as a payment of loan, but to buy the land back. 
Then Shlukei, then they got rid of it because now that they bought the land today, there's no longer a lien on this land. It's no longer, it's no longer encumbered to the um, to the to the lender because the Yisraelim bought it now fresh, and therefore he cannot take it. Oh God! But there was a person the Zogna looks of us in the email. There was a person who sold the suv of his mother. He said, "Look, there's a chance that that my mother might might um, what do you call it? Uh, outlive my father." And therefore, she she gets a, a ksuba, and eventually, my mother one day will pass away. So, so it will trickle down to me, impossible. If uh, but there's a big risk here. First of all, it could be the mother will will predecease the father. Second of all, it could be the son will predecease his mother, which can happen. So, therefore, if he sells it, all he's selling for is a mere tayvus sano, a modicum amount, a very very minimal amount. He's desperate for money, so he sells that right. Um, <clears throat> Um, okay, <clears throat> and then he and he and during the sale he says to them, He asks you, hey, if my mother comes along, let's say my mother's entitled to whatever she comes along, um, and she uh, protests this sale, somehow or another, she protests the sale on, on certain grounds, I will not defend you and I will not be you know advocate on your behalf. What happened was, the mother died. But she did not uh, have any complaints. So now, finally, he was entitled to, to Yashul Iksuda. So the buyer said, no, we, we bought a few from you to so give us the entire concept of Iksuda. But also, you will come out. And then he came along and uh, he said, look, I'm representing my mother now. I'm Yashul my mother. And my mother had the right to, uh, to uh, protest about the sale. And I told you I won't reimburse you. So I'm standing now protesting not as me, but as my mother. And therefore... I'm taking, I'm, I'm keeping the silver and I don't have to reimburse you because I told you clearly that if my mother protests, I'm not going to reimburse you. So Rabbi thought, well, even welcome Imi Valentina. He's not um, protesting in his own name, he's protesting in his mother's name. So Amalei Rabbi said, Rabbi, no. Even though he promised them that if there's any protest from my mother, I will not intervene. But he did not accept the protest from his mother. But truly, they had no anticipation that he himself was going to be the one protesting against him. That for sure, he has to reimburse them. Omar and Bahamas, we have a few cases now. Rami Bahamas said, Ruvain, if Ruvain, Shemacha, Sodal, Shimon, Shalebachai. It's a very odd case here, but this is what happened. Ruvain sold a field to Shimon, but he clearly told him, expressly told him that I am not taking any responsibility if, uh, if it gets taken away. If somebody claims that the land never belongs to me and I could sell to you, whatever it is, I am not, if a lender comes and takes it from, you know, a lender comes and takes it, I am not going to uh, reimburse you. You're taking the risk, and therefore he charged it. He sold him at a discount. But then later on, a couple of years later, Shimon was desperate. He needed cash. So he went back to Reuben, the vendor, was a wealthy man. He said, Reuben, I will prepare to sell you back your property, and, and I'll guarantee it. But also Shimon, I'm guaranteeing it that if I, in case anybody comes and stakes a claim on the property, I will reimburse you. So, but what happened was, but also Balchayv the Ruben, Ruben's lender. No, it was, it was Ruben, the, the original vendor, who then turned to be the purchaser. And the, the, originally, he sold the Shimon. He took no guarantee, no responsibility. Shimon, the, the purchaser, sold it back to Ruben with a responsibility. But it was Ruben's lender who came and seized the field. The Ruben didn't have cash whatever at the time. Seized the field. So in a way, it was Ruben's fault that the field was being lost. Was Bachayv the Ruben? Ketarav him and took it away from him. Dinu who the din is, so this is what Rambam Chama said, the Azul Shimon Fase, Shimon too bad, Shimon has to reimburse him, Shimon sold it back to Reuben, taking full responsibility, so Shimon has to advocate his behalf, otherwise reimburse Reuben. Om the Reuben, no, same logic. Nihi lechai down the kabule, true, Shimon said to Reuben, if we lose the property, somebody says the field was stolen, and whatever it is, I'll reimburse you. But this is Reuben's fault. Here it's Reuben, the buyer's own fault with the original vendor. He owed money to somebody else. And now he's going to lose the field because of that. And you want Shimon to reimburse him? That is, that's, that's too much. It, he never, he, when he promised him that I'll guarantee you the field was not against you, it was against others. But if it's your own fault, I'm not reimbursing you. However, Major Ruben, Ruben, uh, Rab, sorry, Major Ruben, Ruben, uh, concedes. If Ruben, she Yorash, Sodom, and Yaakov, if Ruben inherited a field from Yaakov, 
Umochel Shimon. If let's say Reuben inherited a field from his father Yaakov, who then unsold it to Shimon. Um, same story. And also Shimon Umochel Reuben. And then Shimon sold back Reuben Bachai. Same story. But this time it wasn't Reuben the lender who came to seize the field. It was the original person who gave it to Reuben. In other words, let's say his father's lender. But also Balchai the Yaakov came along the Balchai of Yaakov to eliminate. So it's not Reuben's fault. It's where he got the field from that person there. Then Dinu, then even Rav will agree, the law is the Ozil Shimon of Afatzalaymene. Shimon has to go and try and negotiate whatever it is or reimburse Ruben. Why? My time of Balchev the Yaakov is Kabalchev the Almadami. Yaakov Balchev, the original person who, who eventually gave it to Ruben, is like a stranger. And therefore, Reuben was promised by Shimon that he will reimburse him and give him a guarantee. And therefore, if Shimon is no longer, uh, if the property was taken away, then Shimon's responsibility to either negotiate or to reimburse Reuben. And there'll be more cases like this all the way to the Mishnah um, and Tzadik Gimel. We will uh, continue in Mitch um, uh, Thursday morning, same time.